We're in the last video of this section about importing datasets with Python. And in this video, we're going to use data science libraries to import our first datasets. One of the very popular formats for data is CSV. CSV stands for comma separated values. And that's the very standard way does what it says on the tin. It's a comma separated list of values. In the first line of in 15, I am importing the CSV module from the Python standard library. In the second line, again, opening chapter 113.csv, this time specifying that a new line is a null character, and feeding this opened file handler context manager into the context using the with statement, and piping this file handler into a variable called csv file. In the third line, I am using the dict reader class in csv to read the csv file and feed the results into reader. So now reader is an iterable or a list. To iterate through reader, in line four, what we're doing is for every row in reader, we need to print out some attributes. So here I'm printing row using the key first name, and then again, row using the key last name. As you can see in the output, I have printed my own name and John Smith. So what does row look like? In in 16, I'm again opening chapter 113.csv, repeating everything that I've done in in 15. However, in the last line, what I'm doing is instead of printing the first name and the last name, I'm printing the entire row. You can see here we're actually reading in a special data structure present in Python called the ordered dict, which is an ordered dictionary. And the ordered dictionary is reflective of the order in which the CSV file has been read. Now let's look at something smarter. In in17, I'm importing pandas as pd. Pandas, as you know, is the data science or data wrangling library that I've showed you earlier in the first video of this chapter. The reason why we're importing pandas as pd, which is a short form replacing the long word pandas, instead of just importing pandas like most of other things that we do in Python, is that pandas is actually quite hard to type because it's quite long, and there are many places where we need to type pandas as library. So the data science community has developed this shorthand, which is importing pandas as pd, such that you have an easier time using functions in pandas. The next thing we're going to do is to demonstrate how easy it is to read a CSV file and format it into a pandas data frame. In in18, I'm calling a top level function from pandas pd.readcsv and simply feeding in the file name. As you can see, we don't need to initiate any context manager. We don't need to specify new lines. We don't need to specify whether we're reading, writing, or both. And pandas very nicely puts this data into a nice formatted data frame. The same thing can happen with JSON files. In in19, I'm using pd.readjson and feeding in the file name of the JSON file that we have looked at previously. Here in in19, we can see that again, each dictionary in the list of JSONs is formatted nicely into the data frame at out19, and the keys have handily became column names because they were common across all list items. Let's look at something different. Let's try to use scikit-learn, which is an even more powerful library that is geared towards building machine learning models, and see how we can use that to load datasets. In scikit-learn, there are two ways to load datasets. You can load datasets from the scikit-learn package itself, or you can fetch datasets from the internet. Let's look at the first method. In in20, I am importing from the dataset submodule the function load linear 
which is a way for us to load an interesting data set. In N23, I'm assigning the output of load linear root into a variable called datasets. And the dataset keys, as you can see, has quite a few features. We have data, feature names, the target, which is the thing we need to predict, the target names, which is the class names that we have, and description, which is the description of the datasets. So what does this data actually look like? In N24, I'm simply printing everything we know from the data set. As you can see, there's a big dictionary, as we saw before, five keys. We first see a description, which again, if you want to see it in a nicer format, you should print it out only with the key. We have the data, which is the three features here that we can use to predict the outputs. And we have the target, which is three targets that we need to predict. Now, what if we don't really care about the target names because the machine learning model would not care? And we also don't care about the description because we know about it. In N26, we're using load linear root again, but specifying a keyword parameter return xy equals to true. By setting this keyword parameter to true, what we can do is we can enable the data set to only contain the x, which is the features of the data sets, and y, which is a thing we need to predict in the data sets. The second method in scikit-learn is to fetch data sets. In this highlighted line, what I'm doing is from the data sets submodule, I'm importing a function called fetch California housing. The output of this function is piped into data sets. When you execute this box, it's going to download from the internet a data set much larger than what scikit-learn comes with in the package when you've downloaded it with WinPython. I'm going to store this data onto your local machine. In N31, if we inspect the data part of the dataset by specifying the key data on the dataset dictionary, we can further then look at the attribute shape which describes the number of rows and columns that this data has. As we can see, in contrast to what is the 50 odd rows that we saw in the previous examples, this data has 20,000 rows, 640 different data points, and it has eight columns. So a much larger data set that approximates more of what real life data sets look like. In the next section, we're going to go through how we can use Python packages to visualize datasets. Stick around, and I'll see you next time.